Hi there, Simon from simonwoods.com. I have four fortified wines in front of me, me today. God, you can only just say that, not 44 or 45, but four fortified. Um, and I've got a uh, sherry, two ports, and a Madeira. Um, and uh, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, first one is a uh, Waitrose's uh, Solera Herethana Palo Cortado, uh, made for them by Lustel. And um, I usually, end, actually supermarket uh, own label sherry, particularly the upmarket range that supermarkets do. Uh, one of the bargains of the wine, wine world. And uh, I'll give this, give this one a whirl and I'm looking forward to it. So what is a Palo Cortado? Uh, well, it's um, uh, some, some sherries develop this layer of uh, floor, this layer of yeast on top of them, and they turn into finos and, uh, uh, and uh, manthanias. But uh, some of them, they start developing this, uh, uh, th this layer of, of yeast, uh, and then for some reason it disappears, and, uh, and then they carry on aging in barrel. Uh, so instead of aging and being fresh and clean and, uh, well, not clean, but fresh and uh, uh, pale in colour, they start going nutty and brown, almost like an Oloroso. Uh, so that's the idea of this one. And you stick your nose in, and it has got, um, it's got this lovely briny character. Nuts, raisins, walnuts, uh, but it smells like it's going to be uh, biting and fresh. It's like the... Um, uh, some people say the freshness of a Montiado, the depth of flavour in an Oloroso, and I see exactly what they mean with this one. Yum, yum, yum. Um, bone dry, uh, but rich with it. And um, uh, sometimes you get, you get you, it's one, not one of those that's painfully rich. Sometimes you get those dry Olorosos and it feels like your, your scalp is being massaged by someone with a, um, I, I, I don't know, one of those things that you dig flowers into or with a, with a bed of nails. Uh, here, uh, you do get a little bit of that hitchy scalp character about it, but... Um, it's this nuttiness, it's this walnuts, it's the raisins, uh, and it's these dry fruit cake flavours, if that makes sense. And uh, lovely depth, lovely freshness, and uh, it's the sort of wine that I sit there and uh, sip uh, uh, of an evening where we've had uh, a bottle of wine over dinner and uh, uh, we've shared it and I'm looking for just a small glass of something else. That's perfect. Let's see whether I can say the same about number two. So I've got two ports from Taylor's. One is, uh, well, first one I'm doing is uh, their 10-year-old tawny. Now this has got some of the same, um, it's strange, when I was talking about dry Christmas cake flavours, here there are sweet Christmas cake flavours, so you get more rounded, the plumper raisins, and it's getting into the sultanas, you're getting some of the glacé cherries in here, um, and uh, yeah, but still with that nuttiness in there. And uh, yes, there's, there's a richness and juiciness, doesn't feel like it's going to be one of the most classy of 10 year old tawnies, but probably a darn satisfying drink. And you can still taste a little bit of the spirit in there. Um, and juicy fresh fruit um, feels uh, actually one of the youngest of uh, styles of ten-year-old tawnies I've, uh, I've I've tried, uh, but there is a, a, a juiciness and an opulence about it. And uh, if you don't like that, well, you're wrong. Uh, let's try the next one from Taylor's, which is their LBV late bottle vintage, uh, 2007, bottled in 2012. And I think that they filter this one, so it's not one of those that uh, that does change too much in the bottle. It's not going to go off all that much, but uh, uh, if, you, if someone gives you a bottle, drink it over the next year or so. And once you've opened the bottle, drink it over the next month or so. And there's much a more um, fresh fruit here. If that was on that slightly figgy side, a figgy and raisin, here there's much more fresh blackberries, plums, damsons, and... Um, Maybe even, yeah, there's a touch of that orange peel that I get in young vintage port, uh, and it uh, uh, smell, smells good. I find that a little bit on the raw side, um, uh, the, the, the spirit is standing out quite a bit, uh, and I get this slight hardness on the finish, um, not showing especially well today. Uh, I don't mind that big, rich, brawny, slightly brash fruit about it. Um, uh, but so if you, if you like your, your wines on that big and fruity side, maybe go for that one. But I find the, uh, the tawny that just that little bit more subtle. And um, yeah, wine for more occasions than that. That one, uh, you have to be in the mood for something like that. Let's see whether I'm in the mood for the final wine, which is Blandy's uh, Malmsey Madeira Harvest 2004. Well, I mean, the it, it, first thing I notice about it is uh, is the colour. I don't know if you can see against my blue shirt, but it's uh, um, I'm, I, it doesn't look like one of those Madeiras that someone's uh, plonked loads of caramel into in order to try and make me think, oh, I'm a bigger, richer wine. 
but you stick your nose in and it, it's it's got some of the similarities with uh, some of the previous wines uh, that the, particularly the first two that uh, that uh, uh, the christmas cake flavors the uh, the nuttiness the figs the raisins uh, the walnuts the um, uh, macadamia nuts even uh, but here it feels like they've overlaid with an extra uh, layer of uh, something like treacle toffee it doesn't feel like it's going to be too rich and gloopy but it feels like it's going to be a lot uh, richer and sweeter than uh, the previous wines oh i do like that um it's uh it's rich but fresh uh there's this uh treacle toffee uh character but um balanced by like marmalade and lime marmalade and orange marmalade acidity um as i say flavors uh, the, the nutty fruitcake flavors that, that, that have been in, in previous wines but it's that it's that madeira acidity that um uh, uh, that it really acts uh, as a uh, a rudder for this and points it in the right direction and points it towards me because I think that is uh, that is delicious um, and uh, I mean I, I actually I think all of them are, have something to say for them favourites are the uh, the Palo Cortado and, and the Madeira uh, and uh, neither of, or both of them they they're under twenty quid and I think the Palo Cortado might even be under ten quid. Great wines to uh, to set into, not just at Christmas, but especially at Christmas. Get a bottle of those in, and uh, you'll drink them slow. Actually, you might not drink them slowly. Uh, they, they, they're good enough to 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 make you keep nipping back for another nip. Uh, so it could it could well have gone far sooner than you imagine. In which case, you're gonna go and have have to go and get yourself another bottle. But um, I don't think that's gonna be a hardship. See you soon.